So apparently you guys are not into the highly edited scripted videos. So I'm going to listen and I'm going to try to do this video as unedited as possible. We're going to talk about the five things that I would not do as a Catholic. And these are non-Catholic practices that I see a lot of Catholics doing and why I wouldn't do them. Before we get started into the video, I wanted to remind you that my Catholic wife membership group is in a pre-launch phase and it's already reached capacity for the first tier which is the founders tier so all those spots are taken but if you're interested in it if you're a catholic wife i would love to have you join us and the information will be found in the description of this video i am a firm believer that when you know better you can do better and you can teach people so many things that i did as a catholic were because i just didn't know i didn't know my faith and so i was making decisions based on not having the whole story and one of those things that I would not do today that I have done in the past is yoga now I should preface this by saying I was not a into yoga it was offered at the community center I went I think maybe one or two times I had no idea I thought it was just like an exercise class so I didn't have any kind of background into yoga and as i've continued to learn more and more about the faith i have discovered how how contrary it is to our faith so i wouldn't participate in that and some people have asked me to make a video specifically talking about yoga and what holy mother church teaches about that and should we do it so i will do that in the future if you're interested in a video specifically about yoga leave me a comment down below so i can see if that's something that i should put on my schedule even if you have zero intentions of worshiping a false god yoga a yoga is a new age practice it still is something that is dangerous to our souls and I'm gonna leave for you some resources down below. So before I make my video, if you wanna check them out, I'm pretty sure Father Ripiger has spoken about this. I will leave his video in the description box of this video for you to check out. The next thing that I would not do, and I see a lot of Catholics very excited about it and they wanna do it, is watch the show Chosen. I know that there are a, I know that there's a lot of buzz around this show, but I did hear from Father Dave Nix, Padre Peregrino, that he said that they blaspheme Our Lady. And the show is, while the actor that portrays Jesus is a Catholic, I believe that the person who is producing the show is a Protestant. So just like Father Nix says that anytime someone takes a swipe at Our Lady, I just can't be involved in that and watch that type of a show. And it is a Protestant, it's from a Protestant lens. I'm really not interested in that. I know that there are some beautiful things within it. I don't think that the ends justify the means in supporting a show like that if it is blaspheming Our Lady. The next thing I wouldn't do as a Catholic is attend a non-Catholic service. So when I was a little girl, my grandparents, so my grandfather is a, was a lifelong Catholic and my grandmother was Episcopalian. So the first Protestant in my family on my side it never even was a discussion growing up, which shows how little the faith meant to my, my parents, I guess, not my grandparents, because they were very much into their faith, so much so that when my grandparents got married, my grandfather's mom and dad wouldn't even go to their wedding because my grandmother was a Protestant and my grandfather was Catholic, even though they got married in the church. But it never even occurred to us. They would just go their separate ways on Sunday and my grandfather would go to mass and sometimes he would pick us up from from our house which was basically around the corner and my grandmother would go to her episcopalian church as we would go with my grandfather i remember one time specifically going with my grandmother and if you've never been to an episcopalian service it's kind of like catholic light and there was a lot of similarities to the mass and of course i was attending the novus ordo mass i didn't know that there was any other mass at the at the time when I was a child and it was familiar I remember hearing some of the same prayers that we would say when we would go to mass with my grandfather but it still felt off it felt weird and my faith formation at that time was so inadequate even as a young child I could sense that there was something not quite right so now as I have continued in my faith and learning more about it I wouldn't attend a Protestant service or a Jewish service or what have you and I have done a video, and I don't know if you have seen it, but talking specifically about if a non if a Catholic were to get married in a non-Catholic 
ceremony, so at a, in a beach, at a Protestant service or whatever would I attend. So if you haven't watched that video, I will leave it for you in the card above and down below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about would you go to a Protestant service? And just another quick little story since I'm doing this unedited, just off the top of my head type video. I remember a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, we ran into each other at a bagel shop one time and she told me, she was a catechist, and she told me that she and her husband went to the mega Protestant church in our town. This was back when we lived in Florida. And she told me that they had taken the communion at this Protestant mega church. And even at that time, it really took me aback. I just was so shocked at that because how scandalous is that? You have a person who is Catholic, a catechist, who is going to a Protestant service and giving credence to what they are doing and participating, and which is a sin as a Catholic, to participate in their services would be sinful. So it did shock me, and I'll leave some resources for you down below. As Catholics, we can't do that. So that is one of the other things that I would not do as a Catholic. Another thing that I would not do, and it's something that I've done in the past, is listen to non-Catholic speakers or listen to non-Catholic podcasts. I used to be really big into listening to Joyce Meyer. I thought that she was just this very dynamic personality and she was speaking about God. And this was when we were still Catholic. We never left the faith, but we were also not practicing the faith. So I don't know. I mean, I guess it would have been worse had we been going to one of these Protestant mega churches. But I would listen to her and a lot of the things that she says really were resonating with me about submission, about being a good wife, but there was still something that was off with that. And I remember going to my sister-in-law who was the most religious person in our family and she was born and raised Catholic, but she left the faith and she is still to this day a Protestant. And I remember going to her and asking her questions and it never dawned on me. It never occurred to me at that time because I was away from the church that I should be going to a Catholic, someone who was Catholic, my faith, but I was going to her because I didn't know anybody else to go to. And I remember not ever wanting to join her church, but I was so in need of something. I was searching so much for God and not, and it never occurred to me at that time to just return to my church, just to return to the sacrament of penance and to reconcile myself back to the Lord. That was, I would have to go to, through all these other steps before I, it ever even occurred to me. So if you have been away from the faith, I encourage you so much. If you're a Catholic, just go back to the sacrament of penance. It's as simple as that. If you've been away from the, if you've been away from the church for a while, make an appointment with Father just so he can allocate the correct amount of time for you and he's not rushed and you're not rushed and you're not taking up time when other people might be going, getting ready to go to confession on a Saturday, for instance, and come back the doors are always open. You're always going to be welcomed back into the church. But it's interesting now when I think back to the person I was then, where I was searching in all these other places. And I think that that happens a lot with people is you're searching for Christ. And this most simple thing is he's, he's in the church. He's in the Catholic church. And I'm so thankful for the place that I'm at now. When I was in that phase of searching and looking, I was reading all kinds of books and I remember there was an there was an author, Shauna Nyquist, I believe, and one of her books is called Cold Tangerines. And I loved the style of the way that she would write. And it was very engaging and I just loved the flow of her books. It's, they were easy reads. But I remember in the book, and this happens so often, that she's a Protestant and she would take swipes at Catholicism. And her, they would do this mock mass or something, her and her husband in their faith tradition because they had some kind of tie into the Catholic Church, or maybe one of them were Catholic at one point, and they were trying to recreate something. And I remember telling my husband that, and he was like, don't read that, don't read those kind of books. And I didn't after that point, but again, reading non-Catholic books about religious matters, I think can really be dangerous for our souls and 
But seriously, what's the point of that? We have the fullness of the faith, and there are so many amazing Catholic authors, so many amazing female Catholic authors, if that's what you're looking for. And if you're looking for some recommendations, I'll leave them down in the description box of my video. I wanted to thank you all for supporting my friend Roxy, the Black Catholic. She is such a fun young person, and I remember the first time she commented on one of my videos and I was just so blown away that she even would stumble upon this old Catholic lady's videos and comment. But she's been such a fun person to watch. She's a really amazing fitness coach and I watch her and I'm just in awe of her strength both in body and in spirit. And she has a channel devoted to fitness and what have you but she also she just started her catholic youtube channel and if you haven't watched her i'll link her information in the description box of my video please support her we need so many more catholic women in this space there's lots of great catholic guys out there dr taylor marshall matt frad father mike schmitz all these amazing catholics and it's nice to have other Catholic voices that are female in the arena because our experiences are different. We bring different things to the table. So shout out to Roxy. I'm so excited for you. And I really, really do hope that you guys will go ahead and support her channel. So up next, my next video is going to be the one where I'm going to talk to you about if I lose the Latin mass in our diocese here, what would I do? Would we go SSPX? Would we go Sede? Would we go Byzantine? Would we just go back to the Novus Ordo? And what would I do if my husband didn't agree with what I wanted? So this is kind of going to be two videos that I was thinking about making them separately, but I'm going to put them together. I think that it'll give me a longer video to talk to you guys about and see what you think. So this video is going to be minimal edits. I'm not gonna put any B-roll in it. That's what you guys asked for. And I'd love to hear your comments down below if you like this style of, be of video better than what I was trying to do before. And until next time, take care and God bless. <music>